But we also know this now. We're looking into cancer and issues like that. And the significance is, while they always were looking for cancer genes, like the original DNA, to be defective, they've never really found any cancer genes. But here's what they found, that up to 200 different genes in a cancer cell, the, the output product can be altered even though the gene itself is not altered. And that's, the, that's how epigenetic works. So the interesting thing is, yes, from every absolute appearance, these are totally cancer cells, and they are. But if you look at the genome, it turns out that the cancer is derived from epigenetic control and not from an actual defective gene in the organism. So basically, in both these cases, it says that, that while we've always focused on the blueprint, the gene blueprint, as the source of our problems, now it's shifting to the source of the problem is the readout of the blueprint, uh, which is then controlled by epigenetics. And, and so then, how does this relate to humans? Well, uh, the biggest thing it relates to humans is, uh, uh, for example, in placebo effects, where the belief of the person will change the, the expression, the genetic expression, so that uh, even to the case of what you might call a spontaneous remission, which is almost inevitably tied to somebody have a profound change in their perception or belief about life leading to that. So we're finding that epigenetics uh, can uh, you know be responsible for uh, diseases but it also through a concept called the placebo effect epigenetics can also be responsible for healing mm -hmm. have you it's a very powerful healing modality and I'm wondering if you uh, in your understanding and, and uh, review of the research and, and personal experience believe that there's any specific uh, restrictions or limitations of the technology? I mean, are there any absolutes that you can think that might uh, limit how you can use that? Well, uh, and this is hard for me to say coming from the allopathic conventional world of life, no, I don't think there are limitations. The only limitations, I believe, are on the, on the environmental fields which influence the perceptions. And as a result, then uh, other people's beliefs and attitudes around you uh, are part of what you are perceiving. And since perception controls epigenetics, then our philosophy, our cultural things that are going on around us, the beliefs of others, also then become part of that field, which then can control epigenetics. And, uh, and it could totally impact what you can do. And, and it now, it now I can take one further step of weirdness from an allopathic scientist and, and go like this and say, look, I wasn't even raised in the Christian, Christian tradition, right? But the reality is when, when Jesus actually said you could renew your life with your beliefs, this now in an understanding of epigenetics is, is actually profoundly true. This is exactly how it works. And, and, and it was interesting because he, he used to, you know, uh, you know, come off with a phrase, uh, something like, a, you know, uh, you see me do all these miracles, but you can do them maybe even better than I can do them, but you don't believe in it, which again is the epigenetics. But why I was bringing this up is a, uh, an important instructional part of that same uh, storyline. It goes like this, and I have to paraphrase it, not being a religiously trained person, but uh, essentially uh, Jesus could not do miracles in his own hometown. And the relevance about, well, what, well, was he different than if he was in this town or this town? Why, why couldn't he do the miracles in his own hometown? And the answer is because the field of energy in his own hometown was that the, the people that saw him grow up had no belief in him being able to do this. And then why that becomes important is, look, if Jesus did all the miracles and recognized the place he couldn't do the miracles was where people didn't believe in him. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden you start to realize, yeah, belief can heal you, and the, but the beliefs around you from other people can also influence your ability to express your own beliefs. So it becomes important to recognize what are our limitations, and I think our greatest limitations are the inherent cultural beliefs that we buy into because everyone around us is sharing these beliefs. It's sort of a Rupert Sheldrake, the biologist, new science of life, morphogenic fields. That's what it's all about. Uh, beliefs are energy fields, and as such are really influential in shaping our expression. Isn't it amusing how many people actually get well on the way to the doctor? And, and what this really represents is you are innately able to heal yourself unless your perception says you can't. And, and since perception controls biology, then as Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. And, and we have to understand this because... And it's interesting because there's actually a word to describe this in the medical field, and we don't talk about it in the public a lot. Well, we talk about the word placebo, 
which means a positive thought can heal you even if I just give you a sugar pill. As long as you think this is what's going to make it work, you'll get healed. And obviously it wasn't a pill, it was just a sugar pill. Mm-hmm. That, that's the positive consequence of a, of a thought in a placebo effect. And yet science also recognizes but does not talk to people about what is called the nocebo effect. Mm-hmm. The nocebo effect is when you actually have a belief that uh, is a negative belief. And it turns out that these negative beliefs can not only make you sick, these negative beliefs can kill you, and that's an established understanding of the nocebo effect. And really what the point was this, is that your perceptions or your beliefs are powerful in either direction and equally powerful, meaning as much as a positive thought can be very effective to heal you, and we call it a placebo, a negative thought can make you sick or kill you, nocebo. It's the power of thought that was involved and therefore, if you think you are powerless, then that thought manifests, and then all of a sudden we are victims. And this is, this is an unfortunate situation because we have, it, it is a programming of victimization. There's been history and years and years of histories of people healing themselves that conventional medicine even denies, and, they, and it's right in front of their face. And, and the reality is because if you own it, then you have to say, well, if it works, why can't I use it? <laughs> and that becomes the problem because basically we're dis- we've discounted forever the concept of mind and belief because we bought into the concept of genes. Mm-hmm. And, and so then you say, oh, no, it had nothing to do with you. It had to do with your genes. It's like, no, the new science has everything to do with your belief.